Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a family portrait and I haven't done one of these in a long time. Um, mostly because I covered all the houses that I have huge collections in. For example, we already did uh, my Creeds, my Amouage, my Guerlain, my Rojas, all that good stuff. Um, so I'm going to start aggregating these houses together. So, you know, I'm not just doing a family portrait with a couple of bottles. So today we're going to aggregate two luxury or niche houses together, if you will. One is the house of Nishane, who they're a Turkish brand. Um, and we're going to also do the house of J Javoy, which um, Javoy is a very interesting house um, because the Javoy store in... Um, Paris is almost like a perfume aggregator of sorts. They have any perfume you could ever imagine. Um, the house itself or the store, I believe, goes back to the 1920s. They've been around forever. Um, and they started making their own fragrances, I want to say uh, 2007. Uh, so they've been at it for a little while. And their fragrances, well, well, we'll get into them once we start kind of talking about them in, in detail. But uh, their fragrances, I feel like, are really high value for money. Everything is premium. Uh, the packaging, the attention to detail is premium. But you don't pay these huge premium prices like you do for some other brands that will remain nameless. But let's start with Nishane first. Um, because I want to start with my... Scent of the Day, um, which is a fragrance called, I don't have a full bottle of, by the way, and uh, this is what kind of prompted this video, and also a subscriber asked me if I could, um, if I could do a, um, or if I could talk more about the House of Javoy, so I thought I would just kind of aggregate these two together. So this is a fragrance from Nishane, and it's called Sultan Vetiver. Now, um, I've got a four and a half hour dry down here. And I've got a 15 minute dry down, 10 minute dry down here. Wow. Um, so if you've listened to, I'm gonna do a this is not a top 10 on Vetiver tomorrow. Um, but if you've listened to some of me talk a little bit about Vetiver, you know that I'm not a huge Vetiver lover when it's just Vetiver itself. I have a lot of Vetiver fragrances. Uh, but to me, vetiver is such a serious note. You know, it comes across as somebody that's a little bit aloof, somebody that, you know, maybe they want to keep their co-workers at an arm's length, you know, like they're, they're, they're here and the worker is over there and they don't want them getting too close. They're not going to go meet them for happy hour after drinks or anything, you know, they're, they're separate. And um, it is a very serious note. But the thing about vetiver is that uh, it cannot be replicated in a lab. All vetiver is is the real essential oil that you smell because it's such a complex note. Uh, and it, it also has a little bit of a bright and, and cooling aspect to me from time to time. Depends on the type, obviously. But the reason that this is full bottle worthy, and I'm going to try to get a bottle of this, is that this uses three different types of uh, of vetiver, four different types of vetiver, vetiver I should say, uh, ja Javanese vetiver or Java vetiver, bourbon vetiver, Haitian vetiver, and also it's also listed as vetiver. So there's four types of vetiver listed in uh, Fragrantica. There's also a note of um, anise in Fragrantica and absinthe in Parfumo. So I think they kind of mean the same thing because absinthe has that anise and a seed, you know, feel to it. Um, and there's, there's a little bit of citruses when you first spray, you get this, you get this bergamot with narrowly. But what I, what I really like about this fragrance is this is the, this is outside of, let's say the Ancre Noir series, which I think is the best vetiver bang for your buck you can buy. Um, this is one of the most, this is like King vetiver. Uh, you know, it is vetiver on top of vetiver on top of vetiver. And it is a very serious fragrance. It has a leather that comes in the dry down as well. Four and a half hours in, the leather is really coming out and it is gorgeous. I'll talk about it more tomorrow whenever I do my uh, vetiver 
Uh, this is not a top 10, but I wanted to mention this. There's going to be some from this list that you will see again because uh, the House of Javoy makes two of my favorite vetiver fragrances as well. Um, but I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to mention as scent of the day, Sultan Vetiver. If you're a vetiver lover, you have to get your nose on Sultan Vetiver. I've given this a few wears now, as you can see. Um, and I think it's definitely full bottle worthy. I'm going to try to, I'm going to just try to secure a full bottle. Okay, let's go on to the House of Nishane. So again, they are a, uh, luxury house. Um, well, that was the House of Nishane, Sultan Vetiver, but let's go to full packaging. So this is Ani. And just so you know a little bit about Nishane, they were founded in, uh, Istanbul. They're supposed to give that, um, you know, modern niche feel, but with some deep-rooted um, Turkish traditions. The packaging is very nice. They all come with this box like this that, you know, holds the fragrance well. And they also come with this little postcard. I will show you here in just a second if I can get it all out. Okay, here, I'll show you the postcard for Ani. Um, with a breakdown of the notes and kind of a painting that's supposed to reflect the fragrance, if you will. Okay, so, so there's the notes. You can pause that and read that if you would like. And, you know, there's kind of the uh, artist description of what you get from Ani. And Ani is bergamot, um, ginger, pink pepper. Ginger plays a big role in this. This is basically a take on vanilla that is um, a little bit citrusy and a little bit more bright with some dirty facets from the ambergris. So it's bergamot and ginger and pink pepper in the top, black currant, Turkish rose, and cardamom in the mid, and patchouli, cedarwood, vanilla, benzoin, ambergris, musk, and sandalwood in the base. And so all of the Nishane bottles that I have are all 50 mLs. Um, sometimes you'll see different names on the bottom. I'm not sure if that's where they're created or if they're just putting them on there. Let's see what this says. Now it says made in uh, Turkey. So I don't know if they're all made in Turkey or not, but I think they're all extra de parfums. Uh, so they do last a very long time. Gives me this Roja vibe, you know, like they kind of rode on Roja's coattails to, to be considered a bit of a niche brand like this. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but they did update their caps. This is the newer cap. Um, nice cap, you know, good size. It's pretty heavy. And you get this, um, you get this vanilla, but also with some spiciness, some citruses. This is a vanilla that everyone says, oh, you know, this is great in winter, but to me, this is almost a vanilla that I would wear when it was a little bit warmer as well. Because of the ginger, that kind of sprite, it's, ginger is a very sprightly note to me, you know, it kind of makes everything a little bit, a little bit zesty, a little bit sharper, if you will, and, and allows it to be a little bit more versatile. There's that black currant and rose and cardamom, the spiciness. You definitely get the patchouli. The patchouli plays a um, a big role, but it's not an in-your-face patchouli. It plays a big role in the composition, and um, you know this is this is a fragrance that was hyped for a long time. Um, you know, I'm a little bit lukewarm on it. I'm glad I have it as a reference, but um, will I ever finish this bottle? I don't know. Probably not, because I don't wear it very often. But uh, glad to have it. That's Ani. From the house of uh, Nishane. Let's put this packaging all back together here. And then I will show you the second full bottle that I have from the house. Um, and hopefully there'll be a third coming with Sultan Vetiver. I will tell you that uh, I have sampled the one that is supposed to be inspired by Aventus. It's called Hachibat. And I actually don't like that fragrance. And the reason that I don't like that fragrance is because it takes all of the stuff that I like about Aventus out. So it takes the smokiness out. It takes kind of the dirtiness from the moss of the older batches. Um, and it just gives you this kind of bright pineapple, 
musky, big ambroxan type feel. Um, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's one of those fragrances that um, if you're big into compliments, you'll probably like Hachivat. For me, it's kind of a pass to be honest with you, especially since I have four Aventus bottles of old of the good juice. By the way. I noticed that somebody was selling a 2015 bottle of Aventus for $3,000 on eBay. Uh, those kind of prices might make me sell my 2013 bottle, but with how crazy the Aventus craze is, where is it going? You know, is it going to go to $10,000 in a couple years? Is someone going to pay $100,000 for a vintage bottle of Aventus in a decade? You know, it's just insane. So I'm kind of paralyzed as to what to do. Do I... Do I sell my, I don't know, I love Aventus and I don't want to give it up, but for three or four or five grand, I think you could talk me into it. Okay, let's get back to Nishan A. Um, so this is uh, Fan Your Flames. This is the second one that I wanted to show you in the family portrait. And here is the artwork. There's the artwork with a guy literally fanning his flames, I guess. That's supposed to be indicative of fragrance just, you know, spinning off of you as you move throughout the world. There's the notes. Pretty simple note breakdown. But I actually like this one much more than Ani. Uh, this is coconut and rum in the top, tobacco and tonka in the mid, oak moss and Chinese cedar wood in the base. I can't proclaim to um, really know Chinese cedar wood well versus regular cedar wood. I guess maybe it doesn't have that pencil shaving vibe that uh, Virginia cedar wood has, um, but uh, I really like this fragrance. I think they hit this out of the park. Um, there's another fragrance that I have from the House of uh, Strangers perfumery called um, Cigar Rum that is uh, pretty close to this. See how this one here says New York on the bottom of the bottle. I'm not really sure what all that means, but um, is it Turkey? Is it made in Turkey? Yeah, I guess they're all made in Turkey. This one also says made in Turkey. Okay, so it's not like uh, Amouage where some are made in UK, some are made in Oman. These must all still be made in Turkey. Um, and it does somehow give off this Turkish, it does give off this Turkish-like vibe to me when I smell it for some reason. It gives off a very traditional, you know, traditional feel mixed with the more modern, boozy, um, because of the uh, rum in this. If you're into boozy scents like Roja's Enigma, Pour Homme, um, Creation E in the U.S., Check out uh, Fan Your Flames. This is a great fragrance. I need to give this a, a full wear again. It's been a while. It's been a few months since I've worn it. And, um, you know, these 50 mLs are perfect for me. I probably won't run through 50. You know, I've given this a full wear, and look at that. You know, it's uh, that's more than enough juice for a guy like me. But uh, Fan Your Flames should be on your list if you like fragrances like uh, Creation E. Idole de Luban, you know, stuff like that. Check this out. Cigar Rum by Strangers Perfumery. Um, so the packaging is good. These are easy to kind of to bring around. And um, that is a quick breakdown of my Nishan A's. Okay, so now let's go to the house of Javoy. I've heard some people call it Javois. I'm not sure exactly what the proper way to say it is, but I'll say Javoy since I have a Texas accent. And we're going to start with... Um, we are going to start with one of their big hitters, which everyone knows. This is one of the most popular patchouli fragrances in modern times, and it's called Psychedelic. Okay, now Psychedelic, all of the boxes look the same. They come in this very heavy-duty box. Uh, this is sealed, obviously. When you get it, you'll have to break the seal to actually open it, and it comes like this. And these bottles are absolutely awesome. Um, this bottle is, it's like this crystal, um, heavy, heavy bottle, heavy cap. Um, you could throw some, this at someone and give them a big black eye. And this is basically an amber patchouli 
very modern. It's a little bit sweet. If the sweetness was toned down, this, this would be in uh, consideration for one of the greatest patchouli fragrances of all time, I think. Um, huge compliment getter. People wonder what you're wearing when you wear this. Um, it's basically uh, patchouli and amber with some vanilla and musks and labdanum. You know, labdanum definitely makes an appearance here. You know, you I, the there are some florals listed like geranium and rose. I can't say that I really pick them up just because it's so heavy on the amber and the patchouli. Uh, you know, the labdanum creates that amber accord and the musks, I think, give it some legs. I was reading about musks the other day and they were saying that um, perfumers will purposely put different types of musks in a fragrance so that more people will pick them up. That There are just some people that are um, anosmic to certain kind of musks, let's say. So the more musks that they put into a fragrance, the more it's likely that someone that's anosmic to one type of musk will be able to smell a different kind of musk in the composition which I didn't really think of that, about that, but it makes perfect sense. And um, if you want a very modern patchouli, this is this is a contender. You know, in these fragrances, they're not like Rojas that are 500 bucks a bottle for 50 ml. These are 100 mls, um, and they I think they retail for around $200, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think you can find them on discount. I'll tell you one of the best prices I ever got on one of these. Most of these you're going to pay 150, 160, 170, 180 at discount or something like that. But I think they're two or 210 new. Um, now you'll notice that I have most of the older Jaboy fragrances. The newer stuff like Remember Me and stuff like that, I, I don't have. And this was created by um, Jacques Flory. If you are a patchouli lover, okay, check this out. Now, I will say one thing though, I have to be 100% honest with you guys. Um, there is a patchouli fragrance done by a house that I am really, really loving at the moment. And it's the house of Kritzia. And this is called Moods Uomo. Okay, so for men, the Italian Uomo, this is Moods for Men. And look at the old school atomizer on that bad boy. I wonder why, there we go. Let's see if the light picks it up. I need a better light source, I guess. Look at the old school atomizer there. Um, and this is, is an 89 release. And this is probably my favorite masculine patchouli. If, if you're a fan of masculine fragrances, um, you absolutely have to check out Moods. Um, moods... Um, I talked about Tietro Alla Scala by the same house the other day, uh, and you know how it just completely blew me away. I have another bottle on the way too, by the way, to kind of give me a little bit of a backup. And I talked about how big and bold and amazing that fragrance is. And this is the exact same thing, but for patchouli for men. That's the best way I can really describe it. It has this big carnation big oak moss, uh, there's leather, uh, there's cardamom, it's a little bit spicy. So think about if you could create a patchouli, but in a masculine 80s fashion, and that's what this is. That's why this is my favorite patchouli, for, you know, for a masculine take on it. A woman could wear this, I think, uh, but it does have a lot of historically masculine notes, if you will. It, this is also an amber patchouli. But I like the notes that surround it more, to my nose, because as you know, I'm a vintage lover. And, you know, when I see things like old school lavender and coriander and carnation in a fragrance, I just get giddy. And this is one of my favorite patchouli fragrances to wear. I just feel like an absolute boss wearing this. One spray will last you 15 hours. It lasts forever. Um, and... You can get a 50 ml of this for about 50 bucks still. You can get a 100 ml bottle like this for 100 bucks. So you're talking half price, just as good quality, if not even better, I would say. So I like Psychedelic, but 
if you know the fragrance landscape of old, of years gone past, you could say, if you're on a budget and you need to save yourself some money, hunt down a vintage bottle of Crezia Moods Womo. Make sure it's the Womo. And uh, you will not be... <sighs> You will not be let down, I guarantee it. Okay, um, now we're gonna go on to a fragrance that is a one of the one of my favorite uh, tobacco ambery takes. This is also well here. Let me show you the bottle and stuff before we get into it. This is called Les Joux Sans Fates. And I don't know what that translates to, but I will tell you this came out a decade ago. Amelia Bourgeois created this fragrance. Great name, by the way. Uh, and Les Joux Sans Fates. Okay, so uh, this basically is this heavy amber with um, dried fruits and tobacco and rum. So... Think of it like you're at a party. Think of it like you're at a, um, almost like a, uh, a club. Not, 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 I was going to say restaurant, but not like a restaurant where you're just going to sit down and have dinner, but a restaurant where you're going to sit down and have dinner and there's entertainment and there's men around you smoking, you know, drinking, uh, there's loud music. Everyone's having a good time. Think about that vibe. And so if you think about the notes in this fragrance, okay, um, you get stuff like Angelica in the top, which you know I love the note of Angelica. That's in Royal Oud as well. And Angelica just does something special to a fragrance for me for some reason. There's Petit Gran, there's tobacco leaf in this, there's rum. There is a note of cumin, okay? So if, it, if, if cumin is a no-no for you, you might want to sample this first, but the cumin's not as heavy as another fragrance coming up that's way more heavy on the cumin. Um, and there's uh, patchouli, vanilla, and sandalwood in the base. So all of those notes, you would think, wow, this is a, this is a beast mode amber, and it is. All of their fragrances have great longevity and projection and sillage and all that stuff everyone, everyone else in the FragCon talks about. Um, but what's interesting about this is somehow they managed to make this almost like um, transparent in a way. It makes no sense, right, to have an amber with all these heavy, warm notes, patchouli, vanilla, rum, tobacco, but it's kind of transparent. I don't know how they did it and pulled it off, but um, it, it's an amazing composition. It's one of my favorite ambers to wear. Um... I will also do a this is not a top 10 on ambers, and this will definitely be in there. Um, amber is not listed as a note. It's listed as labdanum, but the labdanum gives off this ambery effect, of course. And um, big fan of this fragrance. I don't know if it's discontinued, though, because there is one coming up I'm going to show that is discontinued. And some of the newer, more popular YouTubers, like some of the women... YouTubers that, you know, they start their channel and they're instantly at 100,000 subscribers because they're hot. Uh, um, you know, I, I seen them talk about this Javoy collection and I never see them talk about this and I never see them talk about another one coming up as well. So I'm not sure if this is discontinued or not, but if it is and you can scoop it up at a great price because it's on discounters or something, grab it. If you're an amber lover, Grab it. Uh, this will not disappoint you. This will not disappoint you at all. And I think all of their fragrances are... I think this one's targeted to men. Psychedelic, I want to say, is unisex targeted. But I think Le Joux Sans Fates is targeted specifically towards men. And beautiful bottle, beautiful presentation. Um, I love these bottles. They're, I mean, look how thick that glass is. Look how thick the glass is there. It is, it is an unbelievably heavy, heavy bottle. Serious, serious piece of uh, work. Like I said, nothing is cheap on these fragrances. Everything is, is premium, but they don't, they don't rape you on the price. Okay, so that is Les Joux Sans Fates. You'll be seeing this again in the Amber video. And then let's go to a couple you'll be seeing again in the Vetiver video. This is my favorite 
uh, creation from Cecile Zerokian, by the way. Uh, this is called Private Label. And Private Label is... Private Label is... You're going to see this again on the Vetiver video tomorrow. But it's this ambery, leathery vetiver with this huge note of papyrus. Okay, so think about... Think about old school scrolls from ancient Egypt papyrus. That's what I think of when I wear this with this beautiful French labdanum in the base. So the labdanum supports everything. So it always stays, I don't want to say resinous. There is some of that resinous feel from the labdanum. How can you have labdanum that doesn't have a little bit of that sticky resinous feel? But the, the vetiver and the papyrus, which there's another fragrance you'll see tomorrow in my, in my this is not a top 10 vetiver fragrance that does a little similar trick, but it's much cheaper than this. Well, but it's discontinued, so prices are going higher. Um, but as far as, you know, every day, I would say just a daily driver, if you like that, remember I was telling you that Sultan Vetiver, and Vetiver in general is a very serious note, um, it's, it's somebody who is not to be trifled with, you know, it's not somebody that you play with, it's somebody who says what they mean, they, you know, they're, they're not messing around, they, they mean business, okay? And this is that exactly, but as a daily driver, this is, I would consider this much easier to wear every day than Sultan Vetiver. Sultan Vetiver has this, I don't want to say special occasion, but it almost does have this, it's so good though. I mean, and, and, and the thing about Vetiver, we'll get into it more tomorrow, but Vetiver can be woody, it can be dirty, um... It can be green, it can give off this grassy type feel, but it's such a complex fragrance. You could almost just create a fragrance out of Vetiver Absolute. It's so complex. Um, in private label, Cecile Zerokian, she created this about a decade ago before her career really took off. She also created Epic Woman about a decade ago, and those are two of her best creations. You know, now that she's kind of big, hit the big time, and she started making stuff like this, it's not as interesting to me what she's been making lately. But what she made initially was amazing. And um, Private Label, I, 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 I'm a little shocked it doesn't get more talk. I understand why, because, you know, if, if, you, if you smelled this, you would know exactly what I mean. Because you'll instantly tell it's a high quality fragrance, but you'll tell it's a very serious fragrance. This is not for somebody that's gonna go drop panties, okay? Uh, this is not for someone that wants a panty dropper, I should say. Maybe they will drop panties, but they're not buying their fragrance specifically to be a panty dropper. They're buying it because, you know, when when they go to work or when they talk or when they're in meetings or, you know, the the image or the aura that they want to project to the rest of the world is a very serious, in control, you know, almost like the boss, um, and something they can wear every day. And this is it. It's a, it's a, it's a great take. If if this is at risk of being discontinued, grab it. And then the other one, which I happen to think is a little bit easier to wear, I love it just as much, um, and it actually has more types of vetiver in it is a fragrance called Incident Diplomatique, and you'll see this again tomorrow. Um, this is this earthy, um, dirty, dark vetiver that somehow they've managed to brighten up a bit because it's mixed with this citrusy orange thing going on in the top with nutmeg. And the nutmeg spice kind of holds it all together. Nutmeg is like putting a bow on, on the vetiver. So the vetiver doesn't run amok. The nutmeg kind of keeps it nice and round, if you will. And then this beautiful sandalwood in the base, and, and I'll mention sandalwood again in the next fragrance. Javoy does sandalwood in a real beautiful way, um, which not a lot of companies get right nowadays. Something about the sandalwood they use I really like. I think it's high quality. Like I said, everything from this brand is high quality. Nothing is cheap. This was made in 20... 
17. Okay, so we're talking six years after private label, but it's kind of going down the same bold type path. Private label is a very bold fragrance, right? Um, very, like I said, very masculine as a daily driver, no, no nonsense type fragrance. This has a little bit of that in the background, but to me, it's a little bit easier to wear on a, not easier to wear because private label is easy to wear if that's going to be your daily driver and that's your thing. I, I would say this would be maybe easier to wear for a larger percentage of the population. The 25% of the people who love private label will love it hands down and, and that's their scent. This I think will, will appeal to a little bit more people just because of that beautiful sandalwood in the base. There is some patchouli, but it plays a supporting role to the vetiver. It's really the earthy, you know, there's Haitian vetiver and Java vetiver. In Java, Javanese vetiver grows mostly on the side of an old volcano. And if you think about that, um, uh, you know, ashy, uh, you think about a volcano exploding over the years and the type of climate that that vetiver is going to grow in versus Haitian vetiver, which is usually very clean and crisp. Uh, Java vetiver, if I'm getting it correct, I think I have that right. The Java vetiver is, um, it's much dirtier. It's earthier. You know, it's almost like, it's almost like smelling a vetiver chifra, if you will. Um, and the best example of Java vetiver or well, the best example of just a um, a, a well-made vetiver absolute that I've, the only one I've ever smelled, smelled like you took a weed or a plant, okay, and you pulled it out of the ground and you smelled what came out, but the ground's not wet. It's dry, okay, so it's dry earth. You pull out the, the root, the weed, and you get that dirt kind of explosion and there's still, imagine the long roots of the of the plant that you pulled out and you kind of shake it off and the dirt goes everywhere and you get that earthy smell that's what the vetiver and that's what the java vetiver really smells like but smoky because of the volcano okay that's the best way to describe it and this kind of hits on that very complex smell of vetiver which sultan vetiver does so well as well this is full bottle worthy if you're a vetiver lover and um, Incident Diplomatique just kind of riffs on that. It plays on it. It takes the it takes the guitar and kind of creates a creates a song off of it in a beautiful way. Um, so I love both of these Javois, the Vetivers, for what they are. Um, and you will see more of them tomorrow. And then the last one is a discontinued fragrance that I got for a deal. I got a, I, I bought this for a hundred dollars. And I'm so glad I did because this is called La Enfant Terrible, the Terrible Child. And the Terrible Child is supposed to um, represent the note of cumin. Now, before you run away, let me just tell you a fragrance that this is compared to in my mind. Hands down, no doubt, there is one comparison. And that is this. Feminite du Bois which is considered by many perfumers to be the best perfume. Many of them, if you ask a perfumer, what fragrance do you wish you could have made? They'll say Feminita Dubois. Um, it's a uh, Christopher Sheldrake and Pierre Bourdon creation. And um, this is not what the original bottle looked like. The original bottle looked like this, almost like this figure of a human with this big stomach that kind of popped out, like a Salvador Dali painting or something. Um, and that was the Sh Shiseido version, which was thicker and heavier and deeper, according to Rich Mitch. This one's a little bit lighter and airy. And that's the reason why, one of the reasons why I love this fragrance so much. The other reason is this is one of my favorite sandalwood fragrances of all time. Um, so this takes this... Um, this takes this spicy, woody, um, you know, take on a fragrance and, um, just 
amps it up. It's it's very beast mode. There is also Virginia cedar here. Um, and you smell a little bit of the pencil shaving vibe in the background, but it's in the background. It's not in your face. What's in your face is the spiciness from nutmeg and, and coriander and one of the most beautiful sandalwood notes I've ever smelled. Uh, and it's a shame this is discontinued and they're releasing stuff like Remember Me because this... Oh, there's also a note of dates here. So think about that. Feminita Dubois, amped up to beast mode with cumin and dates. And one of the most beautiful sandalwoods you'll ever smell. And and I got this for $100, for 100 ml. Uh, and it's a shame it's discontinued. If you can still find this for cheap, Grab it if you're if you want to smell some amazing sandalwood. Um, you know if you if I'll, I'll do a top sandalwood or, or top we'll say um, cedar and sandalwood uh, list one day, and this will definitely be on there. But you do have to like the note of cumin. Cumin's more amped up in this than it is in uh, Les Jus Sans Faints. So family portrait of Nishani and. Um, Javoy, I hope you've enjoyed this. I know there's a lot of other Nishanes and, and Javoy fragrances I have not talked about. Um, you know, so if there's some others that should be on the list, let me know in the comments. Give me your feedback uh, on what you think. We haven't done a family portrait in a long time. My intention of this is it gives me a chance to kind of talk about some different fragrances, highlight some fragrances to you, even maybe go back to old school fragrances and give you some links that maybe you didn't know about existed. This is an amazing fragrance. Uh, so stuff like that, you know, it gives me a chance to kind of interact with you guys in a way that uh, I think is at least entertaining and fun and uh, informative at the same time. So I hope you've enjoyed the family portrait. Uh, if there are some Javoy or Nishane fragrances I should put on the radar, please let me know. I told you guys before that I learn more from you than you do from me a lot of times. And um, cheers, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.